Hello everyone, welcome back to another Engineering Statics lecture video. First of all, I just want to always start off with, I hope you guys are doing well. I want to really reinforce that because engineering can be tough at times, but don't worry, it gets easier. In this particular video, we're going to do something fun. Now last video, I was kind of mean. I talked about equilibrium and how we're going to use equilibrium to solve a wide variety of structural applications. But I didn't show you guys equilibrium. I showed you guys free body diagrams. Now those are very important because those will be a necessary step in equilibrium for every topic that we cover moving forward. But didn't show you guys equilibrium, I teased you guys. It was mean of me. But don't worry, in this particular lecture video, we are going to discuss the simplest form of equilibrium, which is particle equilibrium. Now, I want to emphasize here that this is going to be particle equilibrium, which means that at this point right now, all of our forces act at the same point. All right, so just a little disclaimer moving forward. So for static equilibrium, remember static we talked about last time means that nothing's moving, it means that the acceleration is zero. And we said for this to be achievable, the resultant force must be zero. Therefore, we get this nice equation where the sum of a forces or the sum of forces on a body must be equal to zero. Now we can actually expand this into two dimensional and three dimensional cases. All right, so for a 2D particle, if the summation of forces must be equal to zero, that must mean that all horizontal forces must be equal to zero and all vertical forces must also be equal to zero. And the same thing for 3D, except all the forces in that third direction must also be equal to zero. So this is where the equations come from. So for two dimensions, we said that both directions have to be zero. So we have two equations. The summation of the forces in the x direction must be equal to zero, and the summation of forces in the vertical direction must be equal to zero. You guys know that if we have two equations, we can actually solve for two unknowns. So that's going to be kind of the first case where in 2D, you guys are going to have problems where we have two unknown forces, and we are going to use these two equations to solve for those two unknown forces. 3D, like I said, it's the exact same thing, except we have that third component. So that the summation of forces in the Z direction must also be equal to zero. But this is nice because for 3D, we can actually solve for three unknown forces. Looking pretty good. Now again, I want to just clarify one thing for you guys. For those second years and even graduate students that are sneaking in here, those trolls, you guys are saying, Clayton, there's actually more equations. I understand. And this is why uh, I'm emphasizing a lot that for now we're dealing with particle equilibrium. It means that all the forces act at the same point, which means that there's going to be no rotation. All right, there's the key, no rotation. As we're going to see later on, when forces don't act at the same point, we see rotation, and this violates equilibrium. So we're going to introduce more equilibrium equations in the future to deal with that case. But for now, we're not concerned with rotation because we have concurrent systems. Therefore, for 2D, two equations, and for 3D, we have three equations. So let's discuss 2D. If you guys understand 2D, then 3D is going to be the exact same. So this will give you a brief understanding of what exactly we're going to do. Now, when we're dealing with particle equilibrium, the process can actually be broken down into a series of steps, and these steps never really change. There might be a little bit extra in each one of the steps if you have, let's say, a pulley or a spring, like those special members we talked about. But for the majority, it's going to be nice, easy, and very basic. I know that uh, I know everybody likes that, easy and basic, right? So the first step, always going to be draw a free body diagram. I hinted at this last video. You always want to draw a free body diagram. But we showed you free body diagrams. You guys said, you know what, Clayton, this is pretty easy, and that's great. So let's say that we have a 2D case, and at this point, we have three forces acting on it. So again, the first step in free body diagram, draw all the forces. So in this particular case, I have 100 units of force going towards the right, and we have two unknown forces, F1 and F2. So again, first step in free body diagrams, draw out the forces. The second step is draw out any dimensions. Now the beauty of particle equilibrium is everything acts at the same point. So you'll never have any length dimensions at all. So for here we'll have angle dimensions. So we're going to say that F1 we know acts at 40 degrees and F2 acts at 70 degrees. So after that, the next big step is going to be finding out the force components of all the forces. So this is where week one and week two kind of come into play here, is we have to take our forces and convert them into Cartesian vector notation. 
So we're going to say that F1, looking at it, we can split it up into its X and Y components, where the X component is going to be negative 1 times F1, because again, it's going in the left direction, so it has to be negative, multiplied by cosine of 40 degrees. And then the Y component is going downwards, so it's going to be negative, and it's going to be F1 times sine of 40 degrees. So if we look here, we know that F1 is actually an unknown. So we have the components ready, but there's still an unknown inside of those components. For F2, it's going to be the same thing. So F2, it's going to the left, Therefore, it's going to be negative in the x direction. So we're going to say negative f2 times cosine of 70 degrees. That's going to be the x component. And since it's going upwards, it's going to be positive. So we're going to say plus f2 times sine of 70 degrees. So now I have all of my unknown forces in Cartesian vector notation. Now the 100 is very simple. We know it's simply just going horizontally. But if that 100 was angled in any sort of way, we'd also want to include that force into Cartesian vector notation. Now, you guys are saying, Clayton, this is pretty trivial. I don't know why I have to express them in Cartesian vector notation, and I'm going to let you guys in on a secret. You don't. If you guys are very comfortable at finding force components, so fx, fy, etc., you guys can skip this step. The reason why I'm showing you guys this step, even though it's really tedious, is it'll make much more sense for the three-dimensional case. So. But the final thing I want to mention is make sure you guys include direction. Again, we talked about for both F1 and F2, they're both going to the left. Therefore, we know that it's going to have a negative sign on those X components. So once we have all those, we can use our equations of equilibrium to solve for the unknown forces. So remember, in two dimensions, we have two equations. Summation of forces in the X direction must be equal to zero, and the summation of forces in the Y direction must be equal to zero. So we're going to start off with the x direction, and I get negative f1 times cosine of 40 minus f2 times cosine of 70 plus 100. And you guys may be saying, whoa, hold on there, big guy. Where did you get those numbers from? Well, for dealing with the x direction, we're dealing with the x component of all the forces. So what I did is I looked at the two x components, or the i components of f1 and f2. I threw them into the equation, and then I have to also remember that I have the third force, 100, which is going to the right, so I also had to throw that into the equation as well. So it's again just all of the i components added together. Now, in order to be in static equilibrium, remember that summation of forces has to be equal to zero. So we know that this chunk here must be equal to zero. So now we have one equation. How do we get the second one? Well, we take the summation of forces in the y direction, and it's much easier because we only have the two components. Again, you guys may be slow down, chief. Where did you guys get those components from? Well, I got them from the J components. So all I did was I took those two J components, added them together. If the 100 had a J component, I would include that too, but as we can see, it's perfectly horizontal. And again, to maintain static equilibrium, we know that this must be equal to zero. We have two equations, two unknowns. We can solve for F1 and F2, and I get F1 to be 100 and F2 to be 68.4. That's it. That's all you guys do in particle equilibrium. That's why students love this exam question because it's fairly simple. Now, you guys may be saying, all right, Clayton, this is great. I look forward to this question. And then the prof hits you with a 3D question. Well, 3D is going to be the exact same steps. There's only one thing that makes it harder, and that is determining the vector components. That's it. First step, draw a free body diagram. Again, for particle equilibrium, you're basically just drawing a dot and you're drawing all the forces on it. It doesn't have to be to scale or anything like that, but uh, just make it as neat as possible. So again, free body diagram. The second part is where things get a little bit more difficult because we need to take all of our forces and throw them into Cartesian vector notation. Remember, 3D can be quite difficult because we have three different cases that we have to consider. The trigonometry case, the coordinate direction angles, as well as the position vector case. Now for me, I always find the easiest is to determine the unit vector of those 3D components. The reason why? Well, we know that a force vector can actually be expressed as the force multiplied by the unit vector. Therefore, in this particular case, I have my force F multiplied by a vector. So this vector right here, this is actually going to be the unit vector. If you guys know the unit vector, you guys are good to go because we can actually expand this out into the following. So therefore, we know that our x component would be 0.384f, our y component would be negative 0.512f, and then our z component would be 0.768 times f. 
once you guys have the forces into Cartesian vector notation, then the rest is simple. When you go to your three equilibrium equations, you just pick out the components and place them accordingly. And this is why in the previous slide, I showed you guys the vector into Cartesian vector form. For 2D, it's very simple to go right to the equilibrium equations because you can very easily tell the components in each direction. But again, it kind of screws you in the 3D case because in 3D, it's not so obvious where the components come from. In 3D, it's much better to write them into Cartesian vector form because then when you guys get to the next step, which is the equations, you guys can just pick and choose and go all the way. So again, these three components, these are going to be the components I use in my three equilibrium equations. So I have, if I have all my forces in Cartesian vector notation, well then I can go down and I can solve for my three unknown forces. So remember, in 3D we have three equations, summation of force in the X, summation of the forces in the Y, and summation of forces in the Z, and they must all equal zero. So we have three equations, which means we can solve for three unknowns. But yeah, that's 3D and 2D particle equilibrium. I just wanna thank you guys all so much for listening. And I just want to tell you guys, don't be stressed, be happy. Engineering is supposed to be fun. So if you guys are finding yourself, maybe you're a little bit stressed, just take some time to yourself. If you're too stressed, you can't really focus on things and then nothing really absorbs into you. So if you guys are finding yourselves to be a little bit stressed, just take a break. Just chill, just relax, and then come back to it later. Trust me, it's the way to go. So yeah, again, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next lecture video.